After completing the water break its neck byway and stopping at the pub for some lunch, it was now time to sit down and assess the maps for my next journey, the one that would take me to the start of the Strat of Florida and where I'd be camping tonight. I've got to get out of where I am, take a right. This road cross gates. Feel like let's get over getting here. Which means I'm going off map. Fuck, I need another map. Is it through the forest? Tarragon. Back up the orange road. Into Florida. This journey, although not filmed an awful lot, was actually quite monumental to the trip. If I didn't make it, I would end up having to use the scooter, and if I did make it, then I'd manage to do the entire thing without having to use it, which in my head was a massive feat. The journey ended up being inconveniently longer than expected. One of the mountain roads that I planned on using was closed, so I had to use the detour. That took me around 12 miles outside of my route, which was quite nerve-wracking on a bike that had just ridden through so much water and mud. But with just a few wrong turns, I ended up making it, and at a pretty decent time too. Hello! You join me after doing one of the most epic rides, I think, well, the most epic ride that I've ever personally done, at least. The bike is running okay. Uh, it hadn't broken down many times. I managed to stop to get a picture or two and fill up the fuel. But um, I did stop to let someone go past on a tight road earlier and I noticed that there was white smoke coming out of the back of it so I just uh, ignored it and carried on but the fact that it's made it here is just unreal because you know like I'm at the start of the byway now for Strata Florida which is what I'm gonna hit tomorrow morning and then I don't care if the bike dies then like I've done it, I've made it all the way, you know, and it's still going. It hasn't actually stopped on me yet, and I've changed up how I have all my bag because I want some things accessible, so I've just put dry bags on the outside and uh, I lifted up where the scooter was so it sits higher so that I can get into here as well, which is where I've been keeping my camera. And yeah, and I, I genuinely done the whole thing navigating by my map. I actually ended up seeking a camping spot for a lot longer than I'd expected to. I found a patch of trees just down the track that had a really gorgeous view and some perfect hammocking spots. So I wandered down there to set up camp for the night. I was definitely quite nervous again that night, but a lot less scared than before. And so I settled in for my last night on this adventure. Good morning, uh, I've literally just woken up to this view. It's pretty misty at the moment, so I'm hoping that it clears up, but I do think it's like this because it was such a clear night. Like, 
I had my head poking out of the hammock just looking at the stars. It was beautiful. So yeah, this is my bed from last night. And that's the view from bed. It's only 20 past 7 but a car's already come down the road that I'm parked on and it's not technically part of the byway, it's like part of a, a logging trail track so the plan is I'm just going to get up and pack my things up, hike all of my things to the top of the hill uh, and stash it somewhere and then only put the essential stuff on my bike to then ride down the Strata Florida. You know, we've had a full week of no rain now, so hopefully all of the rivers, crossings and stuff will be at their lowest, um, which is what I'm hoping for because I'm shitting myself. <laughs> I'm a lot more excited than yesterday. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not as scared as yesterday, but I'm still like, oh, you know, a few people have mentioned to me, Oh, are you going on those tyres? <laughs> and um, that doesn't fill me with the most confidence, to be honest with you. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, but what a beautiful place for a morning walk. I decided to stash most of my kit to keep the weight off when I was going down this byway. I didn't know an awful lot about it, but I did know that it was the one that would be harder out of the two. It was a decision that I would come to thank myself for very shortly. And I also decided to leave the scooter, because at this point it had just become an awkward heavy mascot. And now that I'd made it to the second byway, it was obsolete and wasn't needed anymore. As I dropped into the byway, I was immediately met with difficulty. This was the real deal. I was just getting stuck in puddles and hitting rocks under water and getting stuck in ruts. Every tiny puddle felt like a milestone victory. I couldn't believe how difficult just a couple of metres of ground could be to navigate over. <laughs> I don't think I caught it on camera, but... I nearly took a tumble then. <laughs> I just hit a rock funny underwater and it just like spun off to the side. <sighs> I'm taking this whole thing super slowly <laughs> so that I don't freak out. As time went on, I was getting better at figuring out how to go through the puddles, but there was definitely still some difficulty. I was starting to realise just how unsuitable my little bike was for this terrain. So 
So I just uh, wandered up the hill a little bit and there's no more big puddles for a little while, just really rocky hilly terrain. Totally insane that I'm doing this at all to be honest, like I can't believe it. I remember at this point just feeling completely out of my depth but I had lured myself into a false sense of security because I thought that now I wasn't heading into any more water that it would be easier from here but I was quite wrong about that assumption The rocks leading up the hill were quite steep and slippery and the terrain was really difficult to navigate through I ended up getting scared about the drop on the right hand side and then I slipped into a rut. As I was trying to battle my way out of the rut, my bike just kept slipping back and then at one point it fell into my leg and died. Ah, oh, shit. This was quite a scary moment. I was holding the bike onto the hill with my arms. It took a while but eventually it did start and I ragged it as hard as I could out of the rut. I literally had to bounce it out over this rock and then battle my way up the rest of the hill. Oh my god, the bike, I thought it was, that was it, I thought it was dead, I thought I'd fully killed it and then it went again, it started again, <laughs> uh, it fell into my leg at one point so I'm going to have a bruise there I imagine. I feel like I've reached my video game checkpoint moment because this cattle grid has just led me out to the forestry commission track which means that although you're not supposed to drive down there I'm going to so everything I've just done I don't have to do again so all that big hill all that water everything it's done it's in the past so fucking thrilled I do if you can hear this but uh, there is water all in my boots like it's completely soaked I just bumped into some like hardcore off-road people. They had camped out on the byway overnight, so they were out with their four by fours and tents and everything. And I sort of saw them wave, whatever. And then uh, as I was going back to go grab my bike and uh, driving it up, they had a little chat with me. I just, for some reason, it just gives me a real buzz when people think you're a nutter. Like it it kind of uh, justifies it in your own head that what you're doing is mad but you're doing it so then it gives yourself more like praise for doing it at all in truth i was quite rattled from the experience i can now see what the byway could throw at me and it was a little bit scary i was now in a position where everything i was doing i was going to have to do back I didn't have very much difficulty with these rocky trails and was actually enjoying myself.
this is what I'm up against now. And I've just I videoed this clip because I thought that what I was about to face was just another giant puddle. But in reality, this would be my first river crossing. Something that I really hadn't been preparing for mentally and really didn't know how to deal with at all. As I rode in, it all of a sudden became apparent that this was completely different to what I've been riding in before. My bike was struggling to get momentum through the water, and that panicked me. I took my feet off the pegs to see if I could feel the floor, and my feet were just met with thick mud, causing the bike to twist in the water. The whole experience completely shook me. I knew that I was going to have to do that back, and I knew that the next puddle would probably be the same thing again. After doing the big hill, after doing all of those puddles before, and now this, it had just become too much. So, uh, yeah, I think this is it for me and the bike. I've done quite a bit, a lot more than I thought I was ever going to be able to do. The bike has lasted so much, I thought it was going to break down in Brecon, like, and here we are. I just think that my bike capabilities and my personal off-roading experiences has reached ahead now. It's going to be a pain to get back out of where I've just come through this river. It was like basically really thick mud. That's why I was struggling. And now just looking down here, it's just more of the same. And I just think that I should just call it quits. I definitely still want to reach the point. Um, I'll probably just get out of this bike gear and hike there or attempt to. Bit of a shame because I wanted the reason for me to stop to be the bike breaking down. Um, but instead it's, um, it's me reaching my limit with it. Um, and considering the first time I rode off road was two days ago, I think I've done alright. <laughs> In a lot of ways, it was quite sad that the bike didn't make it the last half kilometre to the point of inconvenience. But I'm glad that I made it there at least. It didn't feel like a failure to me at all. I was so impressed with how much I'd been able to do these last couple of days. I mean, I've clearly been going long enough for insanity to set in, at least. <laughs> See, that I can totally do this bit, is what I'm trying to say. Easy. I've done it. I've reached the point of inconvenience. I've actually just gone past it, because this is the part where the track turns into a river. So. I've gone further than the point of inconvenience, actually. Where I go now is back. This is the final point. That's so cool. I've been at this for four days now and it's only just sunk in. This is the last... last bit. <laughs> it's really cool. I am pretty nervous about getting back across that river though, so I'm going to do all my celebrating when I get uh, back through that river and onto the forest trail. I cannot believe I just did that, that's mad. I didn't really film a lot after this because 
I thought it was the end of the video. And I did also still assume that because I'd just driven through a river, my bike would still be breaking down at some point on the journey home. But in truth, it didn't. I managed to ride the bike for a further three hours, all the way from the start of Strata, Florida, back to Cardiff. In fact, at one point I was going down a hill, and I was travelling at 70 miles an hour. Pretty crazy, when you think of it, because for months before this journey, I'd been riding it at 40 miles an hour because it sounded so horrendous. And trust me, it still sounded horrendous. But I was just lying on the tank, willing it to die. At this point, I just couldn't believe it was still going. It was crazy. Nonetheless, it made it all the way back to Cardiff. And I snapped this picture to commemorate the trip. What I didn't know is that this is actually the last picture and the last time that I would see this bike. After unpacking it and hurrying it back into my friend's house and taking a well-deserved sleep, my bike ended up getting stolen. It was later found burnt and had to be destroyed. And I just can't believe the how I went from such a high with it to such a low so quickly over just one weekend. Rest in peace, Max. Thanks for being such a good bike for the five years. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed watching this trip. It was certainly a lot of fun to do and a lot of fun to edit. It's inspired myself to go and do more crazy things on my own. So I hope it's inspired a couple of you guys to do the same. I've got more videos upcoming on the channel so I do hope you stick around and if you haven't already subscribed please do, it really does help me out. <laughs>